captured by women is brought to you by yum vita a delicious way to grow welcome to another episode of captured by women like every other week there are issues to discuss and we're here to discuss those issues Foremost on our list today is the conversation around Republic Day. Our Speaker of Parliament, who happens to be a political science lecturer and an authority in our political scene, has made very interesting comments around what should be our celebration of Republic Day and when the day should actually be. And there are a few other things we'll be discussing. Yeah, yeah. interesting this week. I mean, there are so many things, yeah. but of course, the NIA Ghana card, which doesn't seem to go no away, way, yeah. is back in the news. And I think we will be discussing it, looking at it from the point of view as to whether we should just forget what MPP is saying, what NDC is saying, and seek for the good of Ghanaians as a whole. I think that's very important for us. So we'll look at that and many other things yes. that we'll also we'll talk also about. We'll talk about um, the spine. We'll continue mm. the conversation we started last week right. about spine care. And then this time we'll look at how pregnancy and some domestic chores can actually affect our spine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll the line, anyway, this week we also spoke about, I mean, um, creation of new regions. Yes, we had yes, Kennedy yes, Japan's yes, issue. Yes, yes. I mean, we had Kennedy Japan also talking about the who watches the watchman, watchman. and so many other <laughs> yeah. issues that have come on the scene. But these are the ones I guess we'll touch yes, on. Yes, and we're also we going up. to interview a very inspiring lady who is going to be on our career woman segment. So you don't want to miss today's show. Please stick and stay with us. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll go on with the show. Of course, the show is sponsored by Yum Vita, a delicious way to go. Please stay. for staying with us so tomorrow as we all know is the first of july which is republic day um, it's on this occasion that we also honor our senior citizens for the great work they've done for mother ghana on spring today we are focusing on the dates for the celebration of republic day the speaker of parliament early this year called for a shift in the date from first july to the 7th of january we'll discuss that and why he made that call and then also we'll look at a different angle and look at how we can use this holiday and indeed all other holidays in Ghana to activate patriotism amongst the youth. What are your thoughts about um, this issue and the debate <sighs> around? What? So I'm, I'm wondering when we wake up and we'll be, we'll be told that Ghana is not called Ghana. <laughs> 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 I mean, there's so much coming up mm -hmm. recently about what we, we, we have grown to believe is our history and what mm. is, is now being changed. But I feel like maybe it's the right time. Mm. It's the right time to get the facts right. Mm -hmm. But I totally agree with, with Professor Michael Kui. I mean, when you think about his argument for, you realize that truly 7th of January is when we begin, we began the, the fourth, fourth republic. republic. And that should be the republic we celebrate. Mm. But we celebrated it the 1st of July for so long. It, it now becomes, okay, so why are we changing it? Mm -hmm. But there should always be a time where we, we set the facts straight and we begin to do things in the right way. So I know... Like in the past two years, mm. we've had a lot of conversations around who did what, who didn't do what, what are the, the rights, um, even the conversation around if it's the founder of Ghana mm -hmm. or the founders, founders mm -hmm. of Ghana. Mm -hmm. But really, we need to get the facts right and possibly set the, the history books onto the right track. Because our, for us, maybe we, we've gone past the stage where we'll be taught in school, but our children are coming up. Mm -hmm. And what information are they we getting? Need on that, we yes. need to be clear mm. on certain but things. But surprisingly, so. since he made that call, uh, well, I haven't heard whether he, he has had other people joining the conversation, supporting him, you know, and all that. So I don't know. Amma, have you heard of any contrary I mean, when he said that, it's not views? contrary views per se, but I guess it was open for people to mm -hmm. discuss openly mm -hmm. and people did air their views. I, for one, I agree with you know, Petra on the side that he has a justification for what he's asking for. And so it makes his argument sound right. Mm. But I'm just looking at it where Ghana starts looking at the holidays and why we're celebrating mm. something and what it is we're celebrating. Rating, for me, yeah. a republic, fourth republic, yes, it comes to 7th January. Another school of thought will then come up and say, well, on 7th January is usually when we put in, uh, install our precedents or do the, you know, handing over ceremonies mm. and swearing in. So isn't that going to affect it in, you know, years? Years that the president is elected then we'll say okay then let's just celebrate it in july when a president is elected but other years we do it on 7th january that also comes with all it's all you know issues 
I'm just looking at it. Why are we celebrating it? We're celebrating a republic, yes. Does it necessarily matter when it is celebrated? Because it comes back to that debate about founder, founders. People have done good. People, I mean, the thing is, we're celebrating a group of people and we're celebrating our independence and the republic systems that we've moved through. But over the years, are we happy? Is are this we what we're looking at? Are we I celebrating we're not even it? That's what I think we should be looking at. Why we're, we're what celebrating the and of the also fact that, that Even too many holidays, yes. if this goes away, I wouldn't even be sorry. And that's what makes me, because then someone will come and say, okay, you let's leave it at July, but let's do another one in January. In January. Then we then come back to this whole debate. But the just like holidays. I think the focus should be on the youth, how, hmm. how do we engage the youth during such holidays? I think that should be the crux of the matter. And how so, do we go back to remember what the significance exactly. of the day is? Because I, I feel I like that, 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 increasingly yeah. we're losing sight of what are the, what's the significance of all of these days, that's even true. independent. Mm -hmm. I mean, very recently I've been having lots of, I've been thinking a lot about what does our independence mean to a 19 to 25 year old Ghanaian now? What, it, what did it mean to, us when we're younger mm -hmm. and how how does it even bring any significance to them because you know when we talk about the fact that Inkuma said our independence is meaningless without the total mm -hmm. liberation of the rest of Africa mm -hmm. it was such an important statement and it puts and Ghana in the middle now. of a lot yeah. of things yeah, yeah. but what does that mean now so I we, mean we've when we lost we've lost, lost, we've holidays, lost, lost, it. We lost it because we've we lost don't lost. teach it enough and I guess and it's also because it as we grow mm -hmm. we don't see successive governments living up to the task and making us confident enough to want to celebrate the Republic. Because you should tell me the story and let me be able to appreciate where we travel from and where, where we are now. But yes. now I feel we've gone back many years. So really, is that something to celebrate? But you get it. That's where the, the narrative... We should. But I don't see anything well, the to media, tell. Um, the media, us, because for, school, for example, individuals, Monday, parents. Um, uh, Monday is, is a holiday. Mm. So parents will be at home with their kids. This will be a golden opportunity, you know, to tell the kids about Republic Day, mm -hmm. how it all came about and all that. So I think that um, uh, the focus has to be, as we, we have already said, on the significance and rather sharing the history and celebrating our heroes, historical figures yeah. that have brought us thus far. Yeah. But we've lost it, you yeah. know, somehow you know, along this the week, line. Google Sad. celebrated Ifua Sutherland. Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited because then that reminded me of what impact she had on us, mm -hmm. on the world, yeah. but also to remind us of her work. Mm -hmm. And I feel that sometimes we get lost in all the business of all the things that we're doing that we forget to tell the stories. Mm -hmm. And that true. was a golden opportunity for us to highlight here. But unfortunately, we don't see enough of that. So when we talk about Republic Day, I really want to, to, to make an appeal that who so I, I'm sure the NCCE has something to do with this. Mm. The school system, it's all true. of everybody parents, needs to, parents, parents all of us, we need to begin also, yes. to focus on. Mm -hmm. So for instance, TV radio stations, what's the content that we put out on days like this? Mm. How do we engage young people? Because we'll wake up one day and they don't know anything mm. about what happened or where we are going or yeah. they don't really mm. care. Like, I mean, so... Mm. And it's be good to replicate... It just becomes history. The, yeah. The, what we did for Ghana Month in March. Yes. Yeah. You know, where, you know, it was almost like a national thing. The media was on board. So yes. to replicate it for all our national holidays so that, you know, to be a good yeah. opportunity to remind ourselves, you know... True. And you know, we don't we have to have an, a holiday to, to remember something. It can actually just be... A working a, a day. Memor yes, a, we, we remember it, hours but to not, celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> not actually a holiday. Anyway, guys... We have to wrap up on this, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. <laughs> on that note, we'll wrap up here. The show continues. Please stay tuned. On Big Bang today, we're discussing the creation of new regions that comes up to about six. And so very soon, Ghana may have 16 regions to talk about. Let's talk about this, ladies, because it's interesting that this won't be the first time, you know, um, regions are being created. But the idea behind it, expanding so that we can have decentralization and more management of the regions and the resources being allocated, the story goes on and on. But do you think it's going to achieve that purpose? Do you think we should even start talking about it or we should forget about it? Is EC ready to take on this task? I mean, there's so many issues surrounding this. I, I'm, I'm a bit confused. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm beginning to sound like a, <laughs> a child, <laughs> a skeptic. But the truth is, what have we done with what we already have? Mm. We created, I believe, 38 new districts last year. Right. 
we have serious issues at the district level. We have serious issues at the regional level. I mean, our people are crying out for basic amenities mm -hmm. and access to basic things. And yet we want to create six extra regions. And I, I don't that understand. I really do not understand mm -hmm. for the life of me what we want to achieve. And I asked the question, aside of this being a campaign promise, what is the benefit? I really want to ask, be able to ask the minister mm. that question. Well, they because said, government, let me answer you mm. on that because government says it's the people who are asking for it, not necessarily they providing. So they are only, you know, answering to the people who put them in office. But the issue is that, I mean, yes, maybe maybe a good idea. Mm -hmm. But as Petra said, what is really the true benefit of this? Exactly. Already we are grappling with lack of amenities, infrastructure, lack of infrastructure, even the regions that we have mm -hmm. don't have the supplies mm -hmm. in terms of infra infrastructure. So mm -hmm. why do we need to create new ones mm -hmm. that will lead to a huge strain on the already scarce resources that government has? Really, it's a bit... But you know when they create new ones, we also make it seem as if they are going to add new people. It's going to be the same people, however, the same resources, just now Isn't making it a resources, smaller group. Uh -huh much no but it's still but going to be the same Ghana. Region, we're not going to get money from anywhere so you to create a new region you have to have new institutions yes. or at least um extensions of the existing institutions in these new regions yeah. so the police service judiciary all of those things there's extra cost yes i'm very yes, sure that's that's cost, but what i'm trying cost. to re re draw our minds to mm -hmm. is the fact that the extra cost is from our national kitty what we already have we're not going to get it from anywhere so that's why we're worried about exactly. the creation yeah. because exactly. the same resources the, that, the, but yeah. people's argument to it mm -hmm. then why the fuss if it's the same resource we are not adding numbers does it matter whether we have 10 20 30 regions no but mm. the thing is the resources we have is scarce mm. and with this creation i am convinced and we can't say that it won't have any sort of financial impact. It will. It will. Yes. At least I know it so will have an impact on the number of, of vehicles and yeah. V8s exactly. and but salaries But it will employ more pay. people if you do that. <sighs> yes. That's what I'm saying. Let's do so the, the cost-benefit analysis. Whichever way we take it from, people will always try and justify it. Yes, but, but let's do the real analysis like we're saying. <laughs> are we ready for this? In this particular dispensation <laughs> where we are, <laughs> is this what we're looking is for? Do we have weightier yeah, matters to tackle be first before we come to this? Now we're even asking EC. EC has to come into this. But EC is already grappling with its own issues, even concerning our voters' register. Are they doing that continuous thing they're supposed to be doing? But now you're asking them to go and sit down, wait for f some people to come and vote, make sure they get a 50% of the people living there voting, mm -hmm. then 80% of, of those, those 50% people. choosing to want the creation. And, I mean, and it's you a know, lot of um, in the 2016 election, we had our lowest voter turnout since the 1992 constitution has right. come into place. So 46% <laughs> voter turnout, mm -hmm. the lowest ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, I hope we don't go through this exercise, which is definitely mm -hmm. expensive for us as a nation, mm -hmm. and come out and say, oh, no, we didn't have enough people to say yes. No, oh, well. Anyway, we've been speaking to the Minister of Re Regional Reorganization and Development, Honorable Dan Pekubotri. Let's see what he has to say about the creation of the new regions. So the Commission of Inquiry into the Creation of New Regions submitted its report to the President on Tuesday. The President said that the creation of the regions now rests upon the EC, which is the mandated institution to oversee the process. But between Tuesday and now, a lot has happened, threatening uh, somewhat the process. But we are here to find answers from the appropriate person who is in the position to tell us whether or not these events would have any impact on our expectation of the six regions this year. And I have with me the Minister in Charge of Regional Reorganization and Development, Honorable Dan Koku Boche, to help us do the analysis and discussion. Honorable, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Captured by Women. Ah, thank you very much. This week has been very eventful for you. Yes, yes. Since the presentation of the report to the President, like I said, so many things have happened. But let's start with the sucking of the EC boss and her two deputies and the possible implications on the process. Do you think this would affect the process for the creation of the new regions in any way? Well, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, I think we have had some discussions. You in particular, you followed the work of the commission for some time now. And by the, um, um, what the constitution uh, uh, says about the creation of regions in Article 5. We've been working closely with the Commission because we knew that if the Commission of Inquiry ever 
recommended, that is the creation of new regions, the EC would have to take over the process. So as far back as last year, we even wrote to the Commission to draw the attention to our work as a ministry and if Mr. President uh, set up the Commission, the possible uh, outcome, so that we drew the attention they need for them to uh, uh, include it in their budget preparations, mm -hmm. which they did. Yeah. So the whole conversation about the budget and as yes. to whether or not no. the EC has the funding to do the EC has the was funding sorted. Was sorted out as far back as last year. Mm. Yeah. And then um, as the commission's work came to a close, uh, we also wrote to the commission again that because the commission will be ending their work by the end of June, uh, we want to remind them that there should be important that we start the discussion. We are not prejudging, but in case the commission recommends mm. that there should be, what do you call it, um, a referendum, then they, they should be seen to be ready. Yeah, so we did that. And um, I wrote to uh, 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 Madam Senator Say, as the commission uh, chairperson, and then he militated a letter to a larger student, the deputy chair for operations, and we had a chat. Then they met as their technical uh, team at their level to determine a roadmap. And uh, so they wrote back, uh, the deputy chair wrote back uh, to tell me that uh, the, they want to meet the ministry and then have a discussion about the roadmap they had uh, mm -hmm. as it were prepared. So they were here. In fact, they were in this very office two and a half weeks ago, or three weeks ago, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we met, we had a, a very good meeting, and we're supposed to meet again. In actual fact, I was supposed to meet the chairperson today. Wow. I was supposed to meet the chairperson The former today. chairperson. Well, the former chairperson. Mm. I spoke with her yesterday, and we're supposed to follow up on this. And now that all these meetings were before the presentation of the report, so now that the report had been presented, what next? So there was a need for us to also talk to them. Then this has happened. Mm. So, so, so before this happened, how far had you gone? With regards <coughs> to the rope map to the yeah, referendum. well, you know, they are supposed to do it independently. Yes. Ours is to ask it to uh, be the liaison between the commission, the presidency, and the uh, electoral commission. And then also, of course, uh, when you say they are prepared, I mean, it's budgeted for. And if you know how government system works, mm -hmm. and the fact that it's been budgeted for, that means that the, the money has been offloaded into your account. So there have been some follow-up between the uh, Ministry of Finance and the Commission. And since it's a work that pertains to our ministry, we also have to do a lot of legwork in making sure that all that they need to get their work done is done. Mm -hmm. So that, that was why we we're going to meet. After the roadmap, yes, they submitted it. We have discussed it. And um, we're going to see how best we can support in facilitating mm -hmm. to make sure their work goes on very well. What do you think about the president decision of sucking the three top executives of the commission at this time <clears throat> the way you say present decision as if um, it was um, his decision uh, it's something that he could have done otherwise i mean by what we all understand what the constitution stipulates in article one four says and knowing the events that led to um, the petition that went to the um, chief justice and the chief justice uh, panel he, he, he set up uh, my understanding is that it's not as if the president had any discretion in the matter. So, so he couldn't have done anything about it. That's my it. understanding. That's my understanding. So when um, uh, you read the headlines, but the constitution says president he should, the president would act based upon the advice, and so it was sir, his decision. Sir, so sir. it was his decision to either act or not. I, it, he was not bounded by it? that recommendation no, 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 to no, no. take action. My understanding that once it says sharp, you cannot say you will not do it. It's a definite, it's a definite thing. That whatever advice he, he's given, he should, it's he not should advice. act upon. I don't think it's an advice. It's a recommendation. And the president had to take it. He doesn't, he doesn't have a discretion in that matter. Yeah, that's my understanding. He doesn't have a discretion in that matter. So it's not like me, the president appointed me. He can sack me. You understand? Isn't it? So without, what do you think? Without having I mean, this we, we are looking at the timing, right. the timing, the timing and the possible implications. Is, on the let's also put it in the right perspective. This whole um, process of going through the petition and the chief justice office were uh, happened independently of what this ministry was doing. Mm. You understand? And other things. And it's not as if anybody knew that the chief justice committee 
or she just said for that matter, will present the report in a, at a particular time. Nobody knew that. You understand? Yeah. It came to me as a surprise uh, yesterday, as maybe as many people. You understand? But I wouldn't know. Chief Justice uh, has sent the report to the president. I wouldn't know. You know? Yeah, so it, it happened. And coincidentally, it has happened at the time that we too were supposed to forward. Mr. President, uh, for to forward this report the, today. Exactly why uh, we want to know commission. how. But I'll say that yes, we have been working yeah. smoothly. I mean, it just as if I have been dealing with you at TV3, following on an issue. I come there because I've been dealing with you. There's an understanding. There's some personal, you know, uh, touch to the whole thing. If I can say, oh, they've transferred you, or they moved to a different department, they brought a new person. Well, the new person should be able to continue where you left off. But naturally, somebody you've been dealing with on personal level, uh, you may feel that, oh, I wish he was the same person that could work, you be, be smoother for me. Mm -hmm. That is just about that. But other than that, uh, the EC is a very uh, uh, formidable institution. I mean, very strong structures, right from the district level, regional level. And then at the headquarters, too, they have directories, they have people who have who have been involved. For example, when Alaji Sule came, he came with a whole technical team, about six to eight people of directories who came here and who are, as it were, uh, uh, knowledgeable of what is going on and they know uh, the processes we are doing, I mean, I mean, going through. So I, I want to believe that they should be able to continue. Where, so where is that to suggest that this will not have any impact on, on the process in any way? I, I, don't, I don't expect it to have any impact. I mean, only to the extent that, uh, just as I try to uh, uh, explain, we have been working, we have been speaking, especially from uh, uh, Wednesday we spoke, yesterday we spoke, and today we will have met them. It, obviously, I can't meet them today. Mm. So certainly, uh, for the next few days, um, we may have to wait to see what happens in the commission mm. before we can pick up again. But so to that extent, mm. maybe some few days or maybe a week, yes. But the major work as to organizing yeah. a referendum, uh, there are so many still come very anyway. experienced people in the commission who understand these things, who have been doing a lot of work there. Uh, and I want to believe that that should not affect uh, the referendum and the process. Mm. It should so um, when exactly are we likely to see the rollout plan for this referendum and where and when? Well, the, the when is as Mr. President submits the report to the Electoral Commission. Does it mean commission, the EC does not, it still doesn't have a report I, 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 from the I, I, President? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, judging what has happened, I don't think so. Mm. Um, Mr. President traveled the very day the report was given to him. Mr. President left the country. He came yesterday, the full day yesterday, we were at cabinet meeting, close 11 p.m. So maybe. Uh, and with this thing happening, uh, well, it's for Mr. President to take a decision uh, when to forward it to the Electoral Commission. And then when uh, it is forwarded to them, uh, the commission was to recommend the issue and the places where the referendum would take place. That is the EC? The, no, no, the Commission of Inquiry. Okay. That's what Article 5 for. So uh, that, uh, that is expected to, to be in the, in the in report. In the report. Okay. So the EC gets the report, then you know that the recommendation is that, well, these are the issues. <clears throat> are there so many other issues to be determined? Is there only one issue? How is this to, supposed to be put? Uh, is it yes or no? Then that the Commission will follow, the Electoral Commission who then uh, follow what has been said in the report. The next one is, the, by the Article 54, the Commission of Inquiry is to indicate uh, the places where the referendum should take place. Yeah. And so they are supposed to have indicated that in their report. Mm -hmm. The Commission, the Commission will then take that, okay, the Commission recommends that these are the places where the, the referendum should take place. The I have been on record. And I've said it many times that government will not spend a peso in the campaign for the region. So how could I have said that? And then at the same time, uh, uh, say that um, our success of Mr. President wants them to win. Then you will have said, well, fine, government will support it. A peso but, for the campaign? No. Definitely there will be sensitization, sensitization in the region. Uh, voter education exactly. and all that. But not to campaign that go and vote yes. Printing t-shirts, vote yes for uh, OT, 
or vote yes for a half of no we're not going to do that we are going to print put a uh, vote for it no government is not part of it those who petition and those who are going to campaign so no it doesn't mr president is not looking out for maybe all the six of them voting to say yes and taking personal this thing for that for, for, for that reason the whole electoral commission but why what does the electoral commission do the chairman or the commission what does he do she, she oversees the work of the commission that is he oversees the work of the commission does it mean that he interferes in it? He determines whether it should be no or yes, no. So why will any, if you assume Mr. President appoints a new person, what would that new person do? No, it's not going to be done in the polling stations within the areas where they are going to vote. Not at all. I, mean, I can understand that people say these things, and you as media people, you want to give uh, each side of an issue. But please, I thought, all this at time, let us take it on. Because it doesn't, it doesn't happen. It's so you, are you still optimistic that these six new regions will be a reality this year it oh it should be a, it should be a reality this year uh, th there's no reason why it will not we are in june we have the commission has about Tomorrow three is first july <laughs> three four five months to organize a referendum first july yes today is first july are you factoring um, the fact but they that the, back the commission themselves education, education sensitization and all they have factored all that in there as i said they are an independent body they have factored it they've done this with so many times they have factored it in the roadmap i have seen so by the december we have oh yes regions. by december if they turn out 50 percent turn out in the places where they're supposed to vote and if 80 percent of them turn up that they truly the, the, the chiefs and the leadership, opinion leaders have presented this petition. It's what the chiefs saying, what they are saying is a reflection of the thinking of the generality of the broad mass of their people, the subjects or the people in that uh, petition area. If that is it, and therefore the people come out to vote, because you see, getting 50% turnout is not easy. A trend analysis, if you study the turnout of um this assimilations which is not partisan it's only one region i think northern region which had 52 or 53 percent turnout N nine regions didn't have 50 percent for the past three uh, uh, this assimilations so getting 50 percent turnout in a non-partisan uh, 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 process election is not easy so those who are petitioned is they really have to do a lot of work and then getting 80 percent that's what I'm saying. And that's one, for us, government is not involved in that. We are left, we are left because we don't see government success depending on people uh, voting 80%. No, not at all. We have never seen that way. Mm. So it would be very, very ridiculous. Very, very ridiculous. And it would be a lack of understanding of the process for anybody to suggest that government will have an interest in it to the extent of uh, 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 touching the work of their commission. No, not at all. Mm. And we can only hope that the petitioners, as have been repeated so many times, will do their campaign very well, make sure they, they turn out of 50%, and make sure they get 80%. And I'm sure Mr. President will be very ready to sign the CI to kill the system. That is not of interest to you anyway, as you <laughs> said so. I've been speaking with Honorable Dan Kwaku Buche, uh, Minister in Charge for Regional Reorganization and Development, and we've been talking about the happenings at the Electoral Commission and the possible implications it would have on the creation of new regions in the country. You're still watching Captured by Women. We are back with more. Please stay. Welcome back. On Career One for today, we have a very celebrated Ghanaian lady who represents what I would put together as class, style, influence, and impact, not just in Ghana, but across the world. She's one of the founders of the Guba Awards in UK. She's a celebrated TV host, producer, and a lot of other things, including a professional pediatric nurse. Our guest for today is Denta. I'm watching. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi ladies. You're welcome, Hi. You're welcome yeah. to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so we're very excited that you're here. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've followed some of your work quite a bit, and I must say that you've done very well in projecting Ghana to the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Especially celebrating what people do in their small spaces, yeah. but are significant. Yeah. So yeah. thank you thank for joining you. us. Thank you. And I'm sure there's a side of your story that a lot of people want to hear. I want to know a lot about mm -hmm. <laughs> how you've gone about everything, mm -hmm. combining your work with your profession and all the other okay. things you do um, every way. Okay. But I'm not going to take the wind out <laughs> of everybody's <laughs> seal. <laughs> So I think um, maybe you can just basically start by telling us how all of this has come together. Because you know how you wake up and you didn't have actually planned to be where yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. But and then this, you find that... This was totally unplanned. Mm. Um, it was God's plan, mm. I always say. Um, sometimes we have our own plans. Um, before I started Guba, I was a pediatric nurse. I qualified in 2009. Um, and I remember even before that I was running, I thought I was going to be an athlete, I thought I was going to be doing singing and dancing and acting, mm. which was my passion. Um, and my dad was like, <laughs> you know, what else do you want to be? And I was like, well, I love children. So mm. I think he was like, yeah, your nurse, be a nurse. And mm. I was like, okay, I'll be a pediatric nurse because I love children. So I studied, and I was as I was doing that, I was actually doing my TV show, um, dental show. Um, I was on OB TV at the time, and in 2009, um, I had just had my first son, mm -hmm. um, Nakwari, and me and my husband were sitting in the living room, and he was like, "We're talking about famous Ghanaians and people that were making impact in in London in the UK," and he was like, "Oh." And I was like, oh, there's nothing really to celebrate these people that are really achieving really well, um, doing things amazing, you know, making an impact. And he was like, no, there isn't. It's like, let's, let's, let's do something. Mm. And that was it. Mm. Um, unplanned conversation. And that just led to something else, which has grown above us, mm. I would say. And um, it's really, Guba is really about celebrating excellence. Mm. You know, there's so much negativity in this world that we actually need to know what is good out there. Right. Who can be our role models mm -hmm. when we are facing challenges? Um, and I always say about this girl, there's a six-year-old girl that we gave an award to that has written two books. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That was on Amazon in, you know, all the bookshelves in the UK. And for me, that was like, it made me proud. Because yeah. sometimes you think, oh, you can't do something. But a six-year-old girl sitting yeah, there yeah, writing, yeah. that should inspire you to do something, yeah. you know? Um, and so that's the kind of platform. You know, we encourage people that are doing charities, you know, people that are entrepreneurs, um, small businesses that are starting up, made in Ghana products, mm -hmm. which I promote a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of these things, just putting it on the platform and not just letting Ghanaians know, but people who are affiliated to Ghana in some way or form, you right. know. And so that's what, you know, Guba has become. Hmm. Denta, amongst your highlights is the fact that you received the MBE from mm -hmm. Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And of course, that is a big thing because yeah. seemingly for Ghanaians, it may have seemed far-fetched. Yeah. But you did it, and like you said, you never envisaged something like this. So when you heard that award, that honor being placed mm. upon you, what was the feeling like? I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, I thought the letter was addressed to the wrong person. Mm. Um, because in London, when somebody gets an MBE, it's usually somebody that is quite older, has been mm -hmm. doing the, something for a very mm -hmm. long time, you know? So. I wasn't expecting that at all, but um, I'm very grateful for the award. Um, for all the awards that I get, um, it's an honor and it keeps me going. Mm -hmm. It keeps me um, focused and know that actually you're making an impact somewhere. So then, so let's talk about your work-life balance. Mm -hmm. You're a mom, you're a career woman, you're an entrepreneur. How have you managed to succeed so far? Um, I have been able to manage my four children um, with my the help of my husband mm. um, and my family, my mom, my dad, my sister. Um, I always say that, you know, for you to be a career person, to kind of do what you love, you need the support of your family. Um, and you need a, a husband or a partner that sees your vision and is part of the vision and will allow you to grow mm. and not feel, you know, um, belittled by your success 
because when you're both when you're when you're successful it should be both of you that are, are successful and so my husband is some somebody that I would say is my backbone um, he's the one that actually is the person that comes up all the ideas that I have um, and I'm the kind of the go-getter mm -hmm. and so we are the team okay. together and so yeah that's how I've been able to manage um, I mean, my little one is just one years old, okay. and Nijie, the oldest, is ten, um, and I'm just grateful for my pa my parents that we can, you know, when we need to go and mm. fill my dentasha or do Google awards, mm. they're there to support. But you seem to move between Ghana and UK very often. How does mm. this affect your family life? Because the children will probably you not know, have mummy around all the time. Mm. But how do you bring this into Balance focus? That. In yeah. addition with your work and all that. Yeah. Um, I try definitely um, to make sure that I make the important dates for them. Mm. And so their school plays, I can't miss it. I cannot be anywhere. Wherever it is I have to do, even if I have to ch sign a million check on that day, I won't <laughs> do it. Because those things are what they, they want mummy to be there. They want mummy and daddy to and be there. And that's what they remember. And that's what they remember. Yeah. You know, normal school days, they're okay. And thank God for FaceTime and Skype yeah. and all of these things that we have now that you're able to see mm -hmm. them and you're not feeling like, you know, um, you're, not, you're not physically there. Um, but it's based on communication. Mm -hmm. They know what mummy does. Mm -hmm. um, they go with me to meetings at times. Um, I'm, you know, so I encourage them and so they know what mummy is doing. Um, and so I don't think they, they're too hurtful when mummy's away because they know that mummy's working and mummy's, you know, trying to bring the best for yeah. them. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. Interesting, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's the feeling, I'm sure, all mothers who have to work have at some point the feeling the guilty mother feeling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how do you manage that mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there, that is always there mm -hmm. and it's something that i don't think we can get rid of as mm -hmm. women um and even sometimes when i'm actually going to sleep so bad i'll be saying it like i'll be watching my little one the little one especially the little one he's one mm -hmm. um and so i'll be watching his videos and just you know you just feel oh god i should be there with him you know, um, and it's, it's, it's torture, but you just have to remember in your mind that you're doing it for them. You know, if, if, you, if you make it, they will be successful mm. as well. And so that's what kind of keeps me kind of, you yeah. know, um, yeah. keep me going and not too um, emotional. At night is when I get emotional, especially when I'm sleeping alone <laughs> and, you know, you're looking through your phone pictures, about 2,000 pictures, just, <laughs> you know, scrolling. Um, but yeah, the kids are, they're in safe hands, and so yeah. when you I know that as well, you're more relaxed. Yes, you're that's, more relaxed really that you know that you're there. Yeah. Your yeah. mum, your mum, you know. Yeah. You're catered yeah. for. Yeah. But Denta, as a successful woman, how do you feel when you hear Ghanaian men, or I mean Ghanaians in general, chide women who are successful, saying that they slept their way to the top? How mm. does that? I mean, the perspective from where you sit and the feeling generally. What is it for you? Um, I think that. Um, any person that really says that, um, maybe lack of education, mm. lack of knowledge, not every woman does that. Mm. Um, there's some women that have worked their way, sweat. Mm. Um, and what I always say is that we all see the glam, we all see Denta, but there's so many things mm. that Denta has been through, mm. that Denta is going through, mm. that you know all of these stars that you see on social media are going through. Mm. Um, and so, you know, when you hear that, it really, it's depressing, it's mm -hmm. hurtful, um, because they shouldn't baggage all of us mm -hmm. <laughs> the same way, just right. because One somebody is doing, doing that. It, you can't just baggage, um, you know, all women mm -hmm. um, to be doing that. And so I think that, you know, women need to be encouraged. Um, and that's why, you know, I, I really like praising women that are doing well, successful mm -hmm. women, so that they can get their story out and so it can encourage other women that you don't need to go that route to mm -hmm. make it. You can be who you are mm -hmm. and be successful. Denta, I'm sure you've, you've noticed that, um, especially with the younger generation of women, mm -hmm. there's the feeling that maybe going the, the route of working very hard is, is too it's too long and it's too tiring and maybe also boring for them as they perceive mm -hmm. it. What would you say to that young woman who is just starting out and is thinking, where am I going to start from? Mm. 
I think you need to read as well. I, I you read opera story, read people that inspire you, mm -hmm. read their stories, mm -hmm. and they will share how they their journey, it. how they made it. And it wasn't by going cutting cut mm -hmm. circle, um, cutting down, you know, uh, things that they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They actually, they had to face mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. um, life is not easy, life is hard. <laughs> like I say, don't use social media to kind of um, discourage you from your journey. Mm. The person that is driving a, a Rolls Royce or whatever has been through, they were probably uh, riding a bicycle mm. before they started, <laughs> you know, and so don't think that you just want to go straight mm. and buy a Rolls Royce, work towards it. And it's more fulfilling, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. It makes your story more fulfilling. Mm. Um, and so I think that, you know, what young women need to be encouraged that all that glitters isn't gold, mm -hmm. but you can get the gold. Mm. What single uh, most important advice would you give to career women? Confidence. Mm. Um, and, you know, don't take no for an answer. Um, I'm one person that um, if somebody says no, I want to know why. Um, and I want to keep trying <laughs> until they actually say yes. Um, I remember we were doing the Gooba Expo, which is about promoting Made in Ghana products mm. into the UK market. And I wrote to Tesco about 10 times each email. They were like, no, I'm sorry, um, we're not interested, blah, blah, blah. And I could have given up on the 10th time mm. or the 9th time, but I didn't. I kept on going and we got Tesco's there, you know, to come to the expo to look at some of the products and see whether they are worthy to go mm. into the market. So if you are, if you are not strong, if you not, are not persistent, you will give up so easily, mm. you know? I don't know whether you've seen that picture of somebody here. I think he's knocking, um, yeah. he's like drilling something and he's nearly there, mm -hmm. but then he turns back, mm. you know? And that's, that's life, mm. you know, that's life at times, but you just need to be persistent um, and, and keep going. Great. <laughs> Great. I was smiling in my head a few minutes ago because I saw a video of you dancing with us. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a really good dance, but um, we've, we've had an excellent time with mm -hmm. you. Thank um, you. You've shared some very important, significant um, tools that I'm sure our, our ladies at home and our men as well mm -hmm. would keep and, and act on. But thank you very much. You made a comment about um, not that not all that glitters is gold, but you can get, get the, the gold. gold. Yeah. And that's my takeaway. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us, Denta. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll go on with the show. You remember last week we were talking about the spine and how the heels and the big bags have an effect on it? Well, today we're coming straight into your homes, talking about the daily activities and the chores and how that affects our spine. We still have Dr. Nashele Dodo. She's of Nova Wellness Center. She's talking to us about how to strike that balance when you're doing your household chores so you don't worsen the problem you have with your spine already, so you keep it healthy and it takes you through your whole lifespan. Let's see this. One of the most common things that we're all guilty of, men and women, um, is even a sitting posture okay, at home. You may want to lay down in your couch, you know, bend your head that way whilst you're watching some TV, and that can put a lot of stress on your neck. Even um, bending to pick something from the floor. You hear people, people come in here all the time and tell me, Oh, not me far dear or for more, not me kutsuya na me chie ke. You know, because you didn't bend down properly. So these things can also cause spinal problems. Then the way we bend to sweep is another very, very bad um, way that we can but get. How else can we do it? So we recommend, anyway. we recommend the standing brooms mm -hmm. instead of the very short traditional brooms. And I hear women saying it doesn't clean as well, but I think they are not <laughs> used to it. So if you know that this is better for your health, then I would recommend that you use the standing broom instead of the short traditional broom. And then the way we bend to even wash that's another one. So again, I have patients who will say, yeah, after every day, after washing, you know, my, the whole family's laundry, then my back. So that tells you that your body doesn't like that motion, okay? So again, if this is your spine, okay, and you're bending to wash, what is happening is it's as if you're doing this all the way 
and you may be in that position for hours so now obviously when you're done and you want to now bring it all the way back <laughs> you can feel it right so you can see how stressed this area would be okay especially if you're not a very active person and your muscles are all lax then obviously that motion may be too much so these are some of the things that um, we have to pay attention to and how we even sleep a lot of women or a lot of people in general prefer to sleep on their stomachs or face down but that's the worst sleeping posture it's best to either sleep on your back or on the sides if you sleep on your side then you have to switch mm. don't only sleep on one side and leave the other side all these things also tie in with our social cultural norms mm -hmm. and beliefs because for instance as a woman if you are sweeping and you're standing there's some perception that you're a lazy girl right if you are sitting and washing exactly what kind of woman are you exactly and so then i think it, it, it's high time we, we would even have to change the way we think yes. and the way we see certain things yes generally to help us maintain a very good posture for our spine yes yes you're very right so these some of these things are traditional you know that's how mom taught you how to do it you know you've seen mom um, bend like that to wash so it's very weird for you to do it um, another way with all these uh, things and what we can actually do to correct them because I'm sure whether we feel pains or not most of us I'm sure would be going through things mm -hmm. that we may not even be aware of right so um, we will first say that you should have your spine checked with or without pain and not only you even for your family for children you know we have a lot of kids who come here because they carry these heavy school bags for instance to school and back and sometimes the bag is heavier than the, the weight of the child <laughs> um, itself. So we will say that, bring the kids in. If the kids have spinal issues, a lot of the times it can be solved when they are younger. But if it's not and they get older and the bones fuse, then there's very, very little that we can do. So we'll say get your spine checked first. Start some type of exercise. You know, it doesn't have to... Um, be a gym membership but it could be walking you know just move you could start at 20 minutes and then move up to 30 40 by the time you realize you can walk a whole hour just three to four times a week that's all it takes and then you want to watch your diet we didn't even talk about food at all today but the diet is also important for the bones because if you don't eat well what happens is that the bones degenerate or they get weaker because they don't have the right nutrients so it's very very important that we eat a lot of greens vegetables and fruits to also maintain the spine mm. and so um it's expensive because sometimes when we are talking about these things some of this is at home we will be quick not it's very affordable mm -hmm. what we have is different payment plans so people are able to pick what will work best for their budgets and so we have different groups of people who come in here some can afford to pay it all at once some of them will like to split it up and we're able to accommodate all the different types of people mm -hmm. and um, aren't you also considering for instance doing some free screening for some of us who may not have <laughs> what it takes to come register with you or something so we just did actually um, we do that every so often mm -hmm. we just had one um, last Friday for as part of our fifth year um, of being here Nova Wellness Center so we would definitely do it again and we'll let our uh, um, viewers know when the time comes but we're having uh, a health walk so we we'll strongly recommend that people come and join us mm -hmm. um, for this health walk. And after the health walk, we'll give them an opportunity 
to come in and um, have a screening done at a later time. But mm. yes, we want people to join us. This can be the first step to somebody, you know, starting an exercise routine because as much as the spine is important, exercise is also very, very key to make sure that the, your health status is, is excellent. Mm -hmm. So when is the health walk? So the health walk is July 2nd. That's a Republic Day holiday. Mm -hmm. And we're going to converge right here at Nova Wellness Center by 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be walking through the Ridge Osu area and then back to Nova Wellness Center. We'll do a little bit of Azunto exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Have to throw some fun in there. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then yes, just just have fun with everybody. We're looking forward to seeing everybody to come out for the health walk. We want to be with you throughout your health journey. Whichever way possible, we can help you. We're here to support. Thank you very much. Thank you. For me, this has been an eye opener. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm going to remain the same after this interview because I've learned so much and a lot, especially about the little things we do at home. So let's forget about our social cultural norms and beliefs. I mean, the most important thing is getting the work done. It doesn't really matter how you do it. So if you will sit to protect your spine and then get those things washed, please do. If you have to stand and sweep to be in a very good health condition, please do. And let's put aside some of these beliefs and protect ourselves. You're still watching Captured by Women. We'll be right back. Well, all too soon, we have to go. But before we do that, let's quickly summarize what we've talked about today. We looked at the issue of the Republic holiday and also discussed the debate around the dates for the celebration. And we also talked about whether we should rather focus the conversation around using Republic holiday and other holidays to boost patriotism among the youth. We also interviewed Akosuya Denta Amwateng and we sought to find out from her how she effectively balanced her career and with being a mom and a wife. Then we also spoke about our spine. We started the conversation last week. So today we focus on how pregnancy and domestic chores can hurt our spine and how we can avoid them. The show today, as usual, has been brought to you by Yambita, a delicious way to grow. Thank you so much for staying with us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. It's a holiday, go and have fun. Yeah, <laughs> and dance. <laughs>